Nostradamus is a Frenchman. I can't imagine how terrible he would feel seeing what will happen to France, but I have no doubt he left warnings in his book of prophecy. I am not an expert on French history, but I am sure he would not leave out two famous French emperors, Louis XVI and Napoleon. When Louis XVI succeeded the French throne in 1774, he was a 19-year-old with an enormous responsibility. The government was deeply in debt, he wanted to be a good king, and he wanted to win the love of his people. To end the religious tensions, he signed the Edict of Versailles, granting non-Roman Catholics, Huguenots, Lutherans, and Jews the legal right to practice their faiths. Then he tried hard to solve France's financial crisis, but got no cooperation from anyone. The noble said the king had no right to levy new taxes, so he tried to take out large international loans like our selling treasury bonds today. Unfortunately, that did not go well either. To show his part of the effort, he even published a statement of the French crown's expenses in 1781, a tradition faithfully followed by most world leaders till today, of course, except for Donald Trump. But no matter how hard he tried, nothing seemed to work. In 1783, he hired Charles Alexandre de Calonne, hoping to solve the financial crisis by increasing public spending, kind of to buy the country's way out of debt. Again, that failed. In 1787, King Louis invoked the Assembly of Notables to discuss a revolutionary new fiscal reform. When the nobles learned the extent of the debt, they were shocked and rejected the plan. You see, contrary to public belief, Louis XVI was a good king. His attempts at international loans, public spending, raising taxes on the upper class were all quite ahead of his time. Did Nostradamus see the fate of this unfortunate king? Absolutely. Let me show you what I have found. Quatrain 1.14 Quote, from the enslaved populace, songs, chants, and demands, while princes and lords are held captive in prisons, these will in the future by headless idiots be received as divine prayers. The French Revolution ran on the high notes of La Marseillaise during the Reign of Terror from September 1793 till July 1794. Nobles were sent to prisons before being sent to the guillotine. The country was ruled by fanatics, the headless idiots, like Louis-Philippe II, Duke of Orleans. Louis XVI, cousin who was also France's richest man, he voted for Louis XVI's death, but soon later lost his own head. In Quatrain 188, quote, the divine wrath overtakes the great prince a short while before he will marry. Both supporters and credit will suddenly diminish counsel. He will die because of the shaven heads. Did you know that in 1770, when 15-year-old Louis married 14-year-old Habsburg Archduchess Maria Antonia, the French public was not happy with the match. During the Seven Year War, France's alliance with Austria dragged France into financial chaos. While the French public felt insulted after the defeat by the British and the Prussians, they blamed the Queen and this quatrain clearly showed Louis XVI's unpopular marriage and the effects on his people. In quatrain 202, quote, the blue head will inflict upon the white head as much evil as France has done them good. Dead at the sail yard, the great one hung on the branch. When seized by his own, the king will say how much. During the French Revolution, conflicts between two rival political factions, the Girondins and the 
Jacobins brought more bloodshed to the already chaotic time. With French flags being red, white, and blue, calling this a conflict between blue and white seemed to be perfect. Over 40,000 died across France during the Reign of Terror. In Louis XVI's trial of 1792, the convention's secretary, Jean-Baptiste Malhi, presented the following accusation. Quote, Louis, the French nation accuses you of having committed a multitude of crimes to establish your tyranny in destroying her freedom. Through his defense team, the king answered all 33 accusations for his defense. He was accused of bribing, improper payments to guards, and many more. With the accusation of bribery, it is possible that the king did ask, how much, when he was seized by his own people. Of course, no money can save him from his ruin. In Quatrain 4, 64, quote, the transgressor in bourgeois garb, he will come to try the king with his offense. Fifteen soldiers, for the most part bandits, last of life and chief of his fortune. This quatrain gives another vivid description of Louis XVI's trial. The transgressor wears bourgeois garb, named for middle-class clothes. This is to show who was behind the trial. Raymond de Sez, the king's defense lawyer, stated, Louis ascended the throne at the age of 20, and at the age of 20 he gave to the throne the example of character. He brought to the throne no wicked weaknesses, no corrupting passions. He was economical, just severe. He showed himself always the constant friend of the people. The people wanted the abolition of servitude. He began by abolishing it on his own lands. The people asked for reforms in the criminal law. He carried out these reforms. The people wanted liberty. He gave it to them. The people themselves came before him in his sacrifices. Nevertheless, it is in the name of these very people that one today demands, Citizens, I cannot finish. I stop myself before history. Think how it will judge your judgment and that the judgment of him will be judged by the centuries. At Louis XVI's death, it brought to an end the royal Bourbon rule. His life, fortune, and the French monarchy all ended with him just as depicted in the Quatrain. In Quatrain 4, 65, quote, Towards the deserter of the great fortress, after he will have abandoned his place, his adversary will exhibit very great prowess. The emperor soon dead will be condemned. On the 21st of June, 1791, when Louis XVI attempted to flee secretly with his family from Paris to the royalist fortress town of Montmédy on the northeastern border of France, they were caught and the French public felt betrayed. Although Austria tried unsuccessfully to save Louis XVI, things turned for the worse when the brother of the Queen, Emperor Leopold II of the Holy Roman Empire, died in March 1792. Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette soon followed and lost their lives. In Quatrain 902, quote, by night will come through the forest of rains. Two couples round about rout queen the white stone, the monk king in gray in Varines. Elected Cabot causes tempest, fire, blood, slice. This quatrain did not strike me till I started my keyword research. But look what I found when I searched for Marie Antoinette and the White Stone. This article jumped up and the White Stone was mentioned as a land marked on their escape to Varines. Forest of Rains, closest to Sanzi, was on the route to Austria. 
How could Nostradamus know all these details 200 years before it happened? Then when I searched for the word the Monk King, I found it as the name for Romero II of Aragon, the medieval Spain ruler who decapitated all the noblemen who had dared to challenge his royal power. Was that Louis XVI's intention to kill off his rebellious enemies? He was captured in Marines with gray outlook, and when he was charged for treason, the indictment was for citizen Louis Capet. It is a name the Reign of Terror leader elected to call him. Nostradamus carefully used these words to paint a vivid picture of the events in horror. Like the use of tempest to describe the political and social storms, the word slice to describe the guillotine. Do you still call that a lucky guess? I don't think so. In Quatrain 977, quote, the realm taken the king will conspire. The lady taken to death once swoam by lot. They will refuse life to the queen and son and the mistress at the fort of the wife. Even though Louis XVI viewed his attempt to escape as a way to protect himself and his family, the French public viewed it as his intent to conspire with foreign powers and Marie Antoinette was believed to have passed military secrets that caused several defeats of the French armies by the Austrians. Eventually, the queen was beheaded while the son, Dauphin of France, died in prison. These events were accurately described in the first three lines of this quatrain. But what does the fourth line mean? What does the mistress at the fort of the wife mean? I believe it is about Marie-Louis de Lambal, also known as Princess Marie-Louis of Savoy, who was rumored to be the lover of Marie Antoinette. So that is what mistress of the wife means. As the richest woman in France, she stayed in London to seek help for the royal families, but returned to France to serve the king, queen, and royal children she governed. When she was put to trial and asked to denounce the king and queen, she refused. She was thrown to a crowd of men and died a horrible death. I want to share with you what Louis XVI said after his trial, quote, You have heard my defense. I would not repeat the details. In talking to you perhaps for the last time, I declare that my conscience reproaches me with nothing, and my defenders have told you the truth. I never feared the public examination of my conduct, but my heart is torn by the imputation that I would want to shed the blood of the people, and especially that the misfortunes of August the 10th be attributed to me. I avow that the many proofs that I have always acted from my love of the people and the manner in which I have always conducted myself seemed to prove that I did not fear to put myself forward in order to spare their blood and forever prevent such an imputation. One may wonder, if Nostradamus can see the fate of Louis XVI so vividly, what did he see in Napoleon? It is hard to imagine anyone able to describe the dramatic life of Napoleon in a few quatrains. But Nostradamus seemed to have the ability to see the future and describe the events with incredible accuracy. Let's start with a quatrain that is often mistaken as a quatrain about Hitler. In Century One, Quatrain 60, quote, An emperor will be born near Italy, who will cost the empire very dearly. They will say, when they see his allies, he is less a prince than a butcher. Most people have thought that this quatrain was about Hitler because the word butcher was mentioned. And Hitler was born in Austria, which is not far from Italy. First of all, Hitler was not an emperor, but Napoleon was. And it is funny that Nostradamus used the word near Italy instead of in Austria or France. Did you know that Hitler was born in Branau im Inn, Austria? 
which is 215 miles from the closest Italian town, Trentino Alto Arigi. Yeah, right. That is near Italy by seven hours driving without traffic. Come on, give me a break. Napoleon was born in Corsica in 1769. Is that part of France? No one knows. Because from 1755 till 1769, Corsica was an independent republic. But in 1769, the year Napoleon was born, it was given to Louis XV as part of a pledge for debts by the Republic of Genoa. That happened right when Napoleon was born. Even I had a hard time knowing if he was born as a Corsican or a French citizen. No wonder Nostradamus had to say he was born near Italy. A ferry ride from Corsica to Italy will take two and a half hours. But a ferry to the closest French port of Livorno will take four hours. So, is there a better way to describe where Napoleon was born? Absolutely not. The next line talked about how the emperor cost the empire dearly. Did you know how many people died in the Napoleon War? According to David Gates, 916,000 French men died during the Napoleonic Wars. That was 38% of the entire male population. <laughs> Maybe that is why French men are known to be great lovers. Not only was there great demand for them, they had to take care of more than one lady at a time. Ooh la la. Napoleon's war cost his allies dearly also. Who were his allies? Italy, Duchy of Warsaw, Polish legions, Holland, et Ruria, Luca Piambino, Naples and Switzerland, Confederation of the Rhine and Bonapartist Spain. Some countries you may never have heard of, because not only did they suffer great casualties, some were wiped off from the maps after the wars. So, more than obvious, this quatrain is about Napoleon rather than Hitler. Wait, I have more to show you. Remember I said we need to look for clusters of quatrains. Let's look at the quatrain before this one. Quatrain 159, quote, the exiles deported to the islands at the advent of an even more cruel king will be murdered, two will be burnt, who were not sparing in their speech. After losing the Napoleon War, Napoleon was deported to Elba under the Treaty of Fontainebleau in 1814. He was made emperor of this tiny island in the Mediterranean with 12,000 inhabitants, located 12 miles off the Tuscan coast. Napoleon was devastated when he learned his wife had died, and he was about to be banished to a remote island in the Atlantic Ocean. He escaped in 1815 with only 700 men, but built it up to 200,000 troops in just 100 days. However, he lost in the Battle of Waterloo and was sent to the island of St. Helena, located 1,162 miles from the west coast of Africa. He died in 1821, generally believed to have been poisoned with arsenic. When his body was moved to France in 1840, it was perfectly preserved, a sign of arsenic poisoning. Now look at Nostradamus's choice of words. He did not say island, he said islands, as if he witnessed his deportation to Elba and then St. Helena. Actually, he did not attempt to escape back to France till his allowance was cut off. Who was the even more cruel king that killed him? Did you know King George IV became King of England in January 1820, just in time to plot Napoleon's death? Napoleon died in 1821, just enough time for the poison to work? Can you believe this? The key to solving Napoleon's death has been in the Book of Prophecy 100 years before he was even born. Now, we have two quatrains that are about Napoleon. Can we find more clustered together? Yes. Let's look at quatrain 161, quote, The wretched, unfortunate republic will again be ruined by a new authority. The great amount of ill will accumulated in exile 
will make Swiss break their important agreement. After the fall of Napoleon, France was under the Bourbon Restoration from 1814 till 1830, followed by July Monarchy from 1830 till 1848, after the deposit of King Charles X. Charles X tried to rule with a strong fist, but was forced to abdicate in 1848. Napoleon's nephew, Louis-Napoleon Bonaparte, was then elected president of the Second Republic by a landslide, and four years later became the first emperor of the Second Empire. So the word again and new authority were just the perfect words to use. Believe it or not, the History Channel called this quatrain being about the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Can you believe that? The last part of the quatrain talked about Swiss breaking an important agreement. Do you remember Swiss was once part of Napoleon's coalition? In 1803, it was Napoleon's act of mediation that established the Swiss Confederation and granted its sovereignty. However, in 1815, after the fall of Napoleon, the Congress of Vienna made deals with European powers. Swiss became an independent country with expanded territories at the expense of France. Did you know Geneva was extended to cover 15 Savoyard and 6 French parishes? Why would Napoleon's enemy be so generous to their once enemy Swiss? Maybe there were some secret dealings before that caused Napoleon's defeat that were never told, right? This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.